Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome. Today we're going to dive right on in and uncover some remarkable biblical origins of our divine existence. And I'm going to share some profound articles and biblical scriptures that we are actually God's sons and we are created as light beings. Uh, so stay with me until the end. I want to share a special opportunity con to connect with uh, us on our two weekly private Zoom broadcast. And we'll share at the end, uh, which is Governance Masterclass and the Mobilize the Legislators Initiative. So as we begin to engage in this transformative journey, we explore our celestial divine nature and origins and prepare to be immersed in the awe-inspiring world of our spiritual creation and engaging in higher realms, both in the spirit and in the natural. The radiant beauty and mystical powers bestowed upon us as divine light beings serve a higher purpose in the cosmic design as a co-creative force and a governing process as we move forward and advance from glory to ever increasing glory. We begin to uncover the secrets of our existence and purpose and our unique abilities to deliver creation from the bondage of corruption to bring heaven to earth and to uplift and guide humanity towards a great spiritual awakening. Uh, we, learn, we, we, we learn about the transformative process. Let's just call that a, a transfiguration uh, process uh, that impacts uh, us as enlightened entities, and we have an impact on the world and the sacred wisdom that, that we bring to those who seek higher truths. So uh, unbuckle your seat belts and, and dive right in. I want you to begin to step into our divine origins by faith. Uh, once we do that, uh, what the Lord showed me about stepping in rather than waiting, contending, and tarrying and pressing in, it's an accelerator to the manifestation. So as, uh, as I share today, just begin to step into that, engage into that by faith and say, God, Yahweh, teach me how to walk in this. Teach me face to face. Uh, and, and show me your ways. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. So uh, he has the way for you to learn more than what I'm teaching here. So uh, it's all based on a re uh, relationship with God. And so we're going to discover our divine origins, uh, that it is a powerful exploration of, of our creation, of our celestial ancestry and the profound illumination that lies within each of us. No longer are we waiting for the fivefold ministry to, to step up and do some, something, but Ephesians 4 uh, talks about until the moment we all come to the unity of the faith, until we all come to a perfect man or a mature man, that we are functioning just like Jesus did on earth. He was the firstborn of many, right? So we're moving forward and advancing. He's raising us up. He's maturing us for his divine purpose that we walk out on earth, that we're the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven on the earth and, and beyond. So as we journey through, through the depths of this cosmic consciousness and bask in the radiance of divine wisdom, we begin to unlock the mysteries of God's illuminated offspring and embark on a transformative experience that will forever change our perception and spiritual existence. Uh, doctor, here's some articles I want to share with you. Dr. Mercola said the human body literally glows, emanating, emitting a visible light in extremely small quantities at levels that rise and fall within each day. Past research has shown that the body emits visible light 1,000 times less intense than the levels which we can actually see with the naked eye. In fact, virtually all living creatures emit very weak light. In fact, all things emit light. All, all things are actually living beings. They carry a frequency. They carry a frequency of light. They emanate light, power, and energy. So when we begin to tap into that, that frequency, that light, we begin to have more impact on, on all creation and especially others. To, so to learn more about this faint visible light, uh, scientists in Japan employed extraordinary sensitive cameras capable of detecting single photons. Five healthy male volunteers in their 20s were placed bare-chested in front of cameras in complete darkness 
in a light tight rooms for 20 minutes every three hours. So the researchers found that the body glow rose and fell over the day with its lowest point at 10 a.m. and its peak at 4 p.m. Dropping gradually after that, these findings suggest that there is light emission linked to the body clock, most likely due to how metabolic rhythms fluctuate over the course of the day. Faces glowed more than r the rest of the body. This might be because faces are more tanned uh, than the rest of the body. Uh, uh, there can be a several different spiritual interpretations there, but this article is talking more about in the natural state, uh, since they get more exposure to sunlight. And so gone are the days when words like life energy or aura were re, uh, relegated to a few books in the tiny New Age uh, store. But today, scientists across the world are investigating the energies that propel and likely even rule life itself and hence have profound impact even on our health. So Paul Keith Davis uh, wrote an article several years ago that I loved that I want to share with you. He said, the pure white light of heaven will proceed from the throne to be impacted uh, and imparted into the spirit and soul of the Lord's people to make us divine carriers of his virtue. Many will encounter lights of heaven in private worship and in corporate settings in amplified ways over the coming months and years. This light will manifest as a sevenfold spirit of God in the same way that pure white light directed through a prism highlights the seven colors of the spectrum it pleases the lord he continues it pleases the lord for us to embody his light when we lead the life as one native born to the light we enjoy the fruit and the effect of that light consisting of kindness uprightness uh, and the heart and of truth now, the story of uh, the Mount of Transfiguration is really powerful to me, and I want to read a little bit of that to you, but it's, it's something going on in there that, uh, that the Bible just tells us about this story but doesn't give a lot of detail to it. The Lord began to share with me what, what the Mount of Transfiguration story is all about. So uh, in Matthew 17, it says, uh, And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up to a high mountain. Why after six days? Well, six is the number of man. So we've been going through this, this, this season, this time, this aeon of, of man and uh, traditional ministry. Now he's opened up the mysteries of God to us, and he's showing us something here that, that he wants to show them on the Mount of Transfiguration applies to us today. And so as he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun and his clothes become white as light. In other words, he was manifesting and demonstrating who we really are as sons of light. And Moses and Elijah appeared, right? And the Lord said, uh, well, Peter said uh, to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here if you wish uh, uh, we will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he goes on, a bright cloud has overshadowed them, and he begins to say something that's really key. In other words, what the Lord began to share with me was here on the earth, we, wanted, we want to build our ministry or our life patterned after a previous who's who, or we want to build our life and ministry after a previous move of God. But he says, I want you to move from glory to ever-increasing glory. And the way to do that, he says in verse uh, 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 6 or 5, he says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Or in other words, you need to establish a relationship with him that you only do what you see him say, and you own, or, or do what you see him do and say what you hear him say and by doing so you 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 are here to manifest the king of kings and the lord of lords and uh, you're not here to build your own ministry you're not here to, here to do your own thing jesus said if you see me you see the father so that should be the impact and our of of everything we do and as we grow and he matures us as a son of light we begin to move and uh 
unwilling to take any credit for ourselves. We give him the glory. We give him the preeminence in everything we do. So let's move on. Uh, I want to share some scriptures with you. Isaiah 60, verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And so that, that uh, you know, we looked at several uh, articles, and if you do your own research, you'll find that we are truly light beings. In fact, if you look at the, some of the mystical rabbinical teachings, they'll talk about us being a light being he knew us before the foundation of the world we were, were a light being inside of god that at his appropriate appointed time he released us into the earth and so we were uh, all of a sudden we were born to human parents who were dumbed down and we just thought we were living a life in existence and one day we'll go to heaven but we are the manifestation of heaven on earth we are a light being jesus was the firstborn of many so we're in there with Jesus as being the son of light as well. And so uh, the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Isaiah 63 goes on to say, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Psalms 112 verse 4 says, Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. Psalms 37, 6 says, He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Awesome. I talk about courtrooms of heaven a lot. Uh, there's a legal, <laughs> legal scripture if there's ever one. If you're operating as a, uh, the righteousness of, of the light, uh, he brings justice to you just because of who you are. Psalms 27, 1 says, A psalm of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? So he's the light. So as he, we were created in his likeness and image, so we are sons of light too. It just makes sense when you look at all the scriptures. You were no longer trying to become something. We are something already. There's this awakening that is happening as, oh, this is who I am. In other words, my favorite scripture is 1 John 4, 17. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. Now, I make that personal. I say, as he is, so am I in this world. So am I in this world. So I am a son of light. I was created in his likeness and image. Now, I looked up that word uh, world in Strong's Concordance, and it does, I thought, there's a limitation here. Why, why does he just say the world and he's got all this vast creation out here? Well, that word, world, means cosmos. So as he is, so am I in the entire cosmos. Or as he is, so am I in all creation. Amen? So just step in. Just start doing that. And once we do, you know, we have to realize we're moving outside of waiting and contending and tearing and pressing in like the modern day church is. Stepping in by faith actually creates a manifestation and acceleration to the manifestation of what you're, what you're stepping into. So waiting, contending, tearing, and pressing in didn't really do anything. Uh, uh, but now we're, we're stepping in and accelerating that manifestation and we're learning as we go. I don't know everything. Uh, maybe you do. I don't. And so as I step into something, he begins to share with me because you, you've stepped into this process of acceleration of the manifestation. So he's going to begin to do something as you walk out what Jesus, what, what they said, God said about Jesus, hear my son. Matthew five fifteen says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Put it on a candlestick. And people don't light a, a lamp and then hide it under a bowl or a basket. Let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow for all to see. Let your light shine. Let this little light shine. Come on. We remember that children's song. And uh, so Matthew five sixteen also says, Let your light so shine before men that that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. See, uh, if you see me, you see the Father. It's not about glorifying you. You might just show up on the scene and all of a sudden, why are you glowing? I've had that happen many times. I really didn't know back then when, when it started happening, but I understand that now, scripturally, that I am a son of light. When I appear some, 
somewhere. I don't have to necessarily preach or pray or do anything. I am a son of light. I, that's my being. That's who I am. So let's continue. John 1, 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So his life, his divine purpose, his divine uh, will is that uh, the light be established in us, and we radiate in that light uh, as, we, as we live and walk every day, whatever we do. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light, in the Lord, light in the Lord. So there's this divine mystical union with him that we are light in him. We live and move and have our being. So we walk as children of light in that process. And so every one of us is a minister. Every one of us is right now a, a child of light, a son of light. Colossians 12, or excuse me, Colossians 1 uh, verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. So this is a divine right. This is a divine inheritance. There's something for the courtrooms of heaven. If you're not manifesting that, that divine inheritance, you need to step into the courtrooms of heaven, uh, go through a process to, of discovery with your creator uh, who is light uh, to uncover and reveal the things that are that have held you in limitation and bondage uh, to darkness and begin to govern that, begin to legislate as a legislative and judicial son of light to be set free from every limitation, every legal right the enemy has gained uh, uh, in your life. First Thess Thess Thessalonians, <laughs> I can't say that word this morning. Uh, it says, uh, First Thessalonians, <laughs> there we go again. Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are all sons. We are all sons of, of light. John 12.36 While you have the light, believe in the light. So have faith in the light. Have the faith of God that this is who he created you, you to be. That you may become sons of light. So our awakening, our, our uh, arising into the biblical truth uh, causes us to be transformed to that, that uh, lower realm of existence that we've been taught and we thought we were. Uh, we step into that process of becoming the light. How long does that take? Well, it can, it can just take a, a flash of the eye. And it really does when you step in by faith. Luke 16, 8 says, So the master commended the unjust steward because he was, had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. They were identified as sons of light again. The sons of this world. Have I operated as a son of the world? Well, absolutely. <laughs> but I came to Christ and I'm learning who I am. I begin to govern. I begin to legislate every legal right uh, that my mind has created that the words that i have created uh through uh your words are powerful your heart uh, you know out of the mouth of the out of the heart the mouth speaks so our heart is can be more wicked than our mouth speaking so we have to examine have to test ourselves and sit with yahweh to see uh, uh where we've been operating as sons of this world rather than uh, sons of light you are the gate Psalms 24. We are the gateways wherever we are. Our, our spirit, soul, and body. If you look at uh, Ian Clayton and Mike Parsons' article, have, have the uh, 21 gateways of the spirit, soul, and body. And they say a lot of those gateways, and some of them uh, for me, were, were closed because of my belief systems and the way I was taught. So uh, Psalms 24 declares that we are the gates, for wherever, whatever sphere of authority we've been entrusted to, uh, but we have to begin to release out of, out of our innermost being who we really are. I'll give you an example. The one, one time uh, I was in, uh, 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 let's see, uh, uh, <laughs> gosh, I can't think of the name of it, uh, in Florida, St. Augustine, and uh, I was there, and, and the Lord said, I want you to go, go to the gate of the city. I didn't even know there was a gate. I was just visiting, looking around, and enjoying the first time I've been there. He said, I want you to go to the gate of the city and, 
and obey me when you get there. So I found the gate. There's actual real gate there that was built close by to the fort that's there. And he said, I got there and he said, I want you to just stand there in the gate. I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to decree or declare. I want you to just stand there and allow my light to be released out of you. That that St. Augustine is the first gateway city to the United States. And let that that governing glory be released through you to the entire nation. And so I did that, and I just stood there. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand. I couldn't say anything. He just said, stand there. And I felt this this power, this light, this energy that was being released to me actually uh, uh, came out of me and began to go and spread out like a vibrational uh, force of light, power, and energy that was being released to the nation and in that city. So uh, here's a, uh, one of the mystical rabbinical teachings. Uh, I, I saw this years ago. He said, uh, a strong light is hostile to the eyes. An intense light will burn and destroy. An immense body of light will vaporize anything, turning molecules to atoms, atoms to particles, and particles to energy. Just imagine that happening when we show up on the scene. We don't have to be preachy, preachy, preachy with a religious spirit. We just have to be who we are. Uh, and I only say what I hear my father say, and I only do what I uh, see my father do. We are that, uh, that, uh, that uh, force we are an immense body of light that can vaporize any demonic force that can change and transform anything to power and light and energy. So we gone, went on to say an infinite light, however, knows no bounds. It can go anywhere and enter any place. Nothing can say to infinity, I cannot bear you. You are too powerful for me. For if so, that would be a limitation on the infinite with a capital I. So, uh, what they call uh, infinite light, uh, rabbinical sages actually f refer God to the infinite light. So there's no place too small, no moment too insignificant for the infinite light and you as a co-creative being, as a son of light, to, to belong and to, to minister in. Uh, an article in Quantum Physics I found uh, light, power, and energy are so closely related that they're used to define each other. So now, we shared that scripture about uh, don't hide your light under a basket. Now, with that understanding, when you walk into a room, you are not only releasing the light that displaces darkness, but you're also carrying the, the light, the power, and the energy for whatever Yahweh wants to accomplish. Deliverances, healings, miracles, and other physical and spiritual transformations all can happen in that place of our, uh, where we abide in who we are as sons of light. So just imagine how it would look if you, you, you walk into your house and it's completely dark and you turn the light switch on. Does the light argue with darkness? Absolutely not. It just goes. So that's a, a an application and a demonstration of how we are uh, as a son of light that we can just move in that and demons will be displaced. We are a powerful force when we begin to understand who we are. We have got to uh, die to all those religious traditions of men that made the power of God of no effect, step into who we were, how he created us to be, and do what God said we can do, and there are no limitations. One of the mystical rabbis said, uh, uh, if a rock, though extremely hard, can be hollowed out by water, how much more should it be possible for the light, which is compared to water, to change my heart? I will begin to study it and try to become a scholar of the light. That, that word light is in capital letters. You would literally put an end to all the warfare you're doing. I don't practice warfare. De demons flee when they see me. I don't acknowledge them at all. They acknowledge me because they see now that I'm a son of light. They have no 
no no power and authority over me they they were actually sent to the uh, world for me to crush them under my feet if i'm still engaging warfare i don't know who i am and so uh back to i only do what i see my father do i only say what i hear my father say it's been about five years since i've done any warfare and and so I'm, I'm waiting for the time maybe God will say, okay, I want you to step into warfare, and he hasn't done it in five years. I have a divine disregard for darkness because I'm the light that displaces all darkness. <laughs> uh, so this is an amazing lifestyle to begin to live. I just began to step into it. I didn't understand it, but now I'm beginning to see more clearly and to understand uh, the power uh, of who we really are, uh, our warfare. Well, should probably come to end unless we, we, uh, he tells us what to do. If you know your identity and authority, everything changes, and you can change everything. So we don't any longer have to yell and scream, traditional warfare, bind and loose, cast out demons. We are the gate of heaven on earth. When the enemy sees our, our, us as sons of light, they don't argue they just have to go one john one more scripture one john one five says this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that god is light and in him i live and move and have my being there is no darkness so if we live in him he is the way and the truth and the life the enemy will have to come in through jesus to get to me so God is light, and in him I live and move and have my being. There is no darkness there. And so one thing as we are beginning to learn that we are co-creators, as I live and move in him, I must allow him to live and move and have his being through me. That will change the world. So it is true that we are created in his likeness and image, Yes, yes, amen. Is it true that you live and move and have your being in him? Yes, yes, yes. If you don't believe that, change your mind. <laughs> Think this thing out. Find scriptures. I've given you several. There's more. It's true that Jesus was the first of many, right? Yes, amen. Is it true that he is, so are we in this world, in all creation? Yes, it is. So it's a simple answer to most of your problems uh, that we actually face today. Uh, we need to flip the switch. You are a light being. You are a light being. You are a son of light. You are a strong light being. You are a strong son of light. So our purpose as sons of light is to illuminate the cosmos, all creation, bringing harmony to all creation. As guardians of the divine light, we are God's illuminated offspring and beacons of hope. So I want you to begin to allow your illuminating light, power, and energy to guide your path and uplift your spirit and affect every uh, uh, thing in your sphere of authority. Together we can create a world ablaze with love and compassion and unity. Let's step in and begin to activate, begin to move by faith, begin to, uh, like Jesus said on the Mount of Transfiguration, listen to him, have a deeper relationship with him. Uh, and, and move into this, step into this with faith, and watch what God will begin to do through you. You'll have some encounters with God and with other people that'll, that'll literally cause you, this is, this is the Word of God, this is truth. So I want to share just before we go uh, about my Patreon groups. Uh, we have two weekly gatherings, uh, one tonight, Sunday night, is Mobilize the Legislators Initiative. That's a family-oriented, uh, open communication uh, platform where we all share on different to topics. We actually have 30 minutes of fellowship before every meeting just to get to know everybody. It's, it's uh, not a me, 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 preachy, preachy thing. Uh, but the Tuesday night gatherings, the Governance Masterclass, is on Tuesday night right now. And uh, each tier membership uh, has a seven-day free trial. I've just added that. And there's only a minimum of $10 per month. So you can get at least two meetings with the seven-day free trial. Then decide whether if you want to stay or not. Uh, but each tier level includes my six-hour courtrooms of training intensive video 
that I normally charge $79. So you can get two meetings, you can get the uh, Courtrooms of Heaven training, the six hour video, uh, uh, and access to all our Zoom gatherings uh, twice a week uh, for uh, a, a free trial. If you want to stay with us, it'll cost you $10 a month, or there's higher level tiers if you want to go deeper there. So, and you also have all the access to private uh, recordings each week. So, I'll put the comments in below, uh, the link to my Patreon site. It's www.patreon.com slash revolutionglory. And God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me on this uh, discovering this journey, uh, this extraordinary journey through the origins of God's illuminated sons of light. We'll see you next time, and God bless you guys. Thank you for watching.